hey guys welcome back to my channel it's a girl marina here and i am super excited to have you back on my channel if it's your first time here you're welcome my name is marina i make videos from saskatoon canada where i share about my experiences as a nigerian immigrant in canada i share very vital information on this channel you're going to have a lot of fun here so do well to hit the subscribe button turn on the notification so you know every time i post a new video to my returning subscribers welcome guys always such a pleasure to have you here Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to continue in the mini series that I started a couple of weeks back talking about the different professions in Canada and their certification pathways. The first video I put out in that series was about human resources. I'm going to link that somewhere on the screen and in the description box below. So if you haven't seen that, please go check it out. Today, as you can tell from the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about the banking profession in Canada, the certifications that you need to operate certain portfolios in the bank, the salary ranges, and the best way to get banking jobs. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to learn more about that, definitely keep watching. guys so i'm just going to talk a little about what banking is like generally in canada before i go into the certification pathways so banking and financial services are considered um stable sectors in canada they are relatively stable um, in this whole time where the pandemic has caused a lot of organizations to do like mass layoffs I didn't hear of any mass layoffs that happened in any bank so financial services sectors are considered relatively stable because these are services that people will always need that being said the salary for banking here in Canada is not that fantastic I don't know if maybe that's why it's stable but no it's the salary could be a lot better it's not the highest paying but it is stable so for somebody who's interested in banking if you have had banking experience from your home country and you want to continue banking here in canada um, banking is one of those professions where your previous experience will directly relate you may not be able to get in in the position and in the role that you have um, got into from your home country so say for instance you were a bank manager in your previous country uh, in your home country coming to canada you may not be able to start as the bank manager you may be able to start at a level or two lower than what you've already known but you can work your way upwards okay so that's one place where experience and previous education will directly relate to what it is here banking in Canada is a bit different from what I knew back in Nigeria it's different but if you have previous experience you would definitely be able to um, translate that into banking here you're just going to have to learn the specific ways banking is done here okay so with banking profession your previous education your previous experience can directly translate and speaking about previous education this is also one profession where there's not a lot of emphasis on your previous education there's just emphasis on your previous experience because I don't know anybody who has a bachelor's degree in banking in fact i don't think i've seen that on a on the curriculum of any school i'm going to have to now look into that out of curiosity but i haven't really seen people who have bachelor's degree in banking i haven't seen but there are people who are able to get into banking jobs if you graduate with a post-secondary administrative diploma you may be able to get into the bank as a teller all you have to do is do the certification exams that allows you to handle the portfolios that tellers can manage. If you do that certification, even with a post-secondary diploma, you can get a job in the bank. So previous education, not a lot of emphasis on it. Your previous um, experience is what will really count and set you apart. Okay. I just thought to put that out there so that you have a, an understanding, a general understanding of how the banking profession is in Canada before I tell you about the certifications that you need. Okay. So now that you already know what the general information about banking is in Canada, we are now going to dive into the certifications that you need to work as a banker in Canada. The number of certifications that you need in the bank, depending on the portfolio that you're looking to manage, but I would for the purpose of this video, since I'm targeting this at newcomers and people who are looking to transition into banking when they land in Canada, I'm going to concentrate on the two most popular ones. The very first certification that you need as a newcomer in Canada will be the IFC. IFC means investment funds in Canada. As the name implies, this 
um, certification would improve your general knowledge base of the financial um, services sector in Canada. It will give you the license to sell mutual funds, which is one of the most popular trading vehicles that banks use in Canada. And then it will give you like a general understanding of the capital markets. So this one is like a base. You need this as a fundamental, depending on the role you're getting into. What I find is most popular is that newcomers get in as maybe like customer service reps or bank tellers or financial services representatives. If you're getting in as a financial services representative, it means that you're going to be selling um, products to customers. The most popular products that people um, typically go into the bank to purchase would be RESP, which is the Registered Education Savings Plan, or the RRSP, which is the Registered Retirement Savings Plan, okay? These are very popular um, products that the bank typically sell to people and you need a mutual funds license to be able to sell mutual funds because these products that you're selling to them the mutual funds are basically the way that the trading is going to be done okay so it's like you cannot sell it if you don't have the license to operate what you're going to be selling to them technically so that's what this license gives you gives you the a general understanding it improves your understanding of the capital market it improves your understanding your knowledge base of how the financial services system is this is like the most popular one that I find that newcomers typically go for when they are trying to get into banking in Canada the ISC certification is one that you can study you can purchase the book study on your own book and write the exam and pass for that reason banks are able to um, and employ people without this certification but you typically have like a window a period of time within which you must write and pass the exam so maybe while you're doing your orientation trying to get used to other systems within the bank you're preparing you will have to pass this exam before you start to be able to sell mutual funds okay I find that typically most banks in Canada employ people without this certification more than half the time the bank even pays for you to take this exam and then when you pass it you are now able to handle Handle certain portfolios within the bank. It's typically 90 days. They give you 90 days from when you resume. Within that 90 day period, you must prepare, take, and pass the exam before you can continue to manage those portfolios. Okay, so that's the first one the IFC base information general knowledge. The next level after the IFC is the CSC. It is CSC stands for Canadian Securities Course. Now, this one gives a lot more information. This CSE exams allows you to operate more portfolios that the IFC will not allow you to access. So uh, CSE is like a broader version of the IFC. The CSE is like a baseline regulatory requirements to perform securities, mutual funds, and alternative fund transactions in financial institutions. Okay, so while the IFC gives you license to sell mutual funds, the CLC expands that reach to allow you do alternative mutual funds. So while you can do mutual funds, you can take it a step higher and you can now sell other things other than just mutual funds. Okay, people that take the IFC certification typically end up as financial services representatives on different levels, but the CSC certification allows you to climb higher to become a financial advisor and the portfolios are very different the um, portfolios that you have access to the trading vehicles that you have access to sell are different so the CLC gives like a broader scope of what you can sell um, than the IFC okay does this make any sense so these are like the two most popular um, certifications that you need to get into banking in Canada the IFC investment funds in Canada and the CSC Canadian Securities course certifications with these certifications of course you'll be able to get into any bank because banks typically pay for it it is advisable for you as a banker when you're coming in to um, search for the jobs apply for the jobs don't be don't knock yourself out because you don't already have the certifications it is not unusual that banks will employ people and then pay for them to take the certification exam so don't if you can wait if you can wait and try to apply for a job before you take the exam so that that cost is borne by the bank and not you that's fine if you want to go ahead and take the certificate certification exam on your own do the payment on your own and then have the certificate while you're applying for the jobs that's fine as well but whatever amount of money you can save as a newcomer counts so if you're able to apply for jobs directly without um, trying to take the exam first that's what i would typically advise because i don't know anybody who has paid for that certification out of pocket the banks typically pay for it so save your money try to apply for jobs first before you try to um take this 
certifications okay that's what i would typically advise it happens it's not unusual okay the easiest way that i have found people are able to get banking jobs in canada number one is through a lot of networking networking on social media platforms like linkedin um, networking by attending job fairs banks typically do those organize those um, open houses and job fairs from time to time where you have like speed interviews you're talking to different people and in that process they are shortlisting the people that they want to talk to on the next level of the interviews so at that time it's your personality you want to bring out you want to bring out your communication skills you want to bring out your people relationship skills because at that time it's not your resume that's talking it's your personality they see first after your personality catches their attention then your resume does the rest of the talking and your interview skills too will also set you apart so that's typically how banks um interview but right now with the restrictions in gatherings with the um social distancing that everybody's observing i'm not very sure how those are now going to translate into virtual i don't know how they're going to do virtual um job fairs but there are still job postings that i see from time to time on linkedin so linkedin is going to be a sure um place where you want to network especially as a newcomer who's looking to get into banking okay now the salary ranges for banking like i said the salary for banking in Niger in <sighs> nigeria <laughs> The salary for banking in Canada is not that fantastic. The uh, range, I found this range online on Glassdoor, so it may not be 100% um, accurate, but that's what I found online when I was trying to look up what these ranges are. So the salary range for like a customer service representative, like a bank teller, that's anywhere from $36,000 to $42,000 annually. That's what the, um, that's for a customer service or bank teller, that range that's what that goes for for a financial services representative the range is anywhere from 40 to 47 thousand um, dollars canadian dollars per annum and then for a financial advisor it can go from 45 to 55 thousand dollars per annum again these are not fantastic numbers but as a newcomer it is more than a good place to start okay as a newcomer it's a good place to start but this is the range that i found online and this is what goes in canada as of right now okay um, i hope that you found this video helpful i hope i was able to answer the questions that you already have if you have more questions about this that i haven't addressed in this video please do also leave me a comment in the comment section below and i'll get to it if you prefer to send a message where you want more personalized information please send me an email my email address is always in the description box of my videos please send me an email and i'll get to it as soon as i possibly can it is taking me longer to get to my emails this day my hands are full like i would have explained a couple of times on this channel my hands are full but i try as much as possible to respond to my emails every week so please send me an email and i'll get to it in the shortest time possible okay thank you very much for watching this video guys if you watch up to this point and you're yet to subscribe to my channel please do well to hit the subscribe button below and turn on the notification so that you know every time i provide valuable valuable information like this one that you just watched so thank you very much for watching this video guys and until i come your way in my next video it is marina saying thank you and have an awesome day bye guys